Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to work with few more basic transformations such as adding columns, using literal or static values, renaming columns, removing columns, filtering or limiting data from a data frame. But before we jump into the hands-on, if you have not subscribed or if you have not seen our previous video, I would recommend you to go back and watch our playlist. You can click the i button at the top. I am in my JupyterLab environment. Now, we are going to use the same employee data frame that we created in our previous sessions. Let's quickly generate our Spark session and employee data frame. So our employee data frame is ready. This is the data for our employee data frame and this is the schema. All the columns for our employee data frame were string. As usual, in order to make our data frame queries easier, we will correlate it with the SQL query. Consider this SQL query. We are selecting employee ID, name, age, and we are casting the salary as double. Now, we have already seen casting in our previous video where we used the EXPR method to do that. But today we are going to use the PySpark data frame APIs that are provided by the PySpark SQL functions module. Let's import column and cast. Let's write our employee casted data frame. Now, let's select employee ID, name and age from employee data frame. Now, we know that we can use the call method in order to explicitly call a column. Let's call the salary column as call. Now, in order to cast, we can write dot cast and we can put double. Let's run this. Okay, in order to verify, we can write print schema. Awesome. Looks like our salary column is casted properly. Now, since our salary is already casted to double, now we can calculate our tax. In order to calculate our tax, we will use salary into 0.2, which is 20% of the salary. Let's create our tax data frame. For that, we'll write EMP underscore taxed is equals to EMP casted dot. Now, since tax is a new column, in order to add a column, we can write that column as an expression in select. But there is a neat way. We can use with column that is provided by Spark. With column will help us to add a new column or overwrite an existing column. Now, since we are adding a new column called tax, we will write tax and we can now put the formula to calculate tax. Let's run this. In order to view the data frame, let's type dot show. Nice. Now we have a new tax column which is calculated as 20% of the salary. Consider a case where you need to add static values in your data frame. So consider this. We are adding one as a new column called column one or we can add a constant string called 2 as a column 2. Now in SQL, we write 1 as column 1, 2 as column 2. This will add two new columns in the table itself and the value for those columns would be 1 and string 2 respectively. In order to create that distributed static column, we would need literal. Let's import the lit method from PySpark SQL functions. Now, we know that to add column, we can use the with column. Let's add two new columns to the employee tax data frame. We will create EMP new calls as a new data frame that we will create from the employee tax data frame. Now, to add first column, we will write with column and name of our column is column 1. And we will use lit in bracket, we will write 1. This will add one new column, column 1, with the value of 1. Now, again, we have to add one more column. So, we will write again with column, 
column 2 and the static value inside the lit method which is 2. Let's validate the data. Nice, we have two new columns as column 1 and column 2 and if you see the value is static throughout the table. This is how we can add new columns in a table. Now, what if we need to add 10 columns at a time? Do we need to write with column every time in order to add a new column? No, there is a better way. We will see that as a bonus tip for today. Consider we need to rename columns. Now, in our SQL query, you can see employee ID is renamed as EMP ID. So, Spark provides with column rename, which will help us to rename columns. Let's quickly look into that. From our data frame, employee new calls will create a new column called EMP underscore one equals to. Now, to rename a column, we will use with column renamed. This will help us to rename any column. So we have to rename employee ID to EMP ID. If we run this, nothing happens. As we know, this all are transformations. In order to run something, we'll need action. Let's run the so method, which is an action. Nice. You see, the employee ID is renamed. We can use with column rename in order to rename columns. Again, you can do this in the select EXPR as well, or you can use the EXPR method that we have seen in our previous video. So there are multiple ways in which you can rename a column in Spark. Now, there's one important question that is always asked. Can we use a column name with spaces? You see, column and two has space in between. So can we use this name as a column name? Yes, in Spark we can do that. In order to do that, we can use the same column rename method that we have just seen. Let's create a EMP2 data frame from our EMP new calls data frame. We'll write with column renamed and we'll rename the column as column 2 to column 2 with spaces. Let's view the data. Awesome. You see, the column name has space. This was just for demonstration. If you are sending this data to any downstream systems which are using column names, and if there is a space in the column name, the downstream system might throw some error. This is why in production systems, we never recommend put spaces in column names. What if we need to remove columns? Is there a way we can do that? Yes, we can do that. Let's drop the column 2 we have just added. To do that, we will write EMP drop data frame from our EMP new calls data frame. In order to drop the column, we will write drop and we will just add the column name, which is column 2. Let's run this. Nothing happens because we are writing transformations. Let's call an action. Nice. You see, the column 2 is dropped. You can use drop to drop n number of columns. In order to drop more than one column, you can use the comma and put the column names. See, both the columns are now dropped. We have been filtering data from the very previous session of our hands-on. We know how to do that. Let's create our employee filtered data frame. We'll use employee dropped data frame and we will filter using where and we'll put the filter statement where tax is greater than 10,000. We'll run this. Nothing happens since these are all transformation. Let's run the so method. Nice. You see, the data is filtered based on tax greater than 10,000. We can also use limit in order to limit the data. Consider from the filtered data, we only need to see five records. We can do this using limit and in bracket we'll put five. If we run this, nothing happens. Let's view the data.
see there are only five records now you can also limit the data while viewing consider you want to show only two records you can put limit as two in the show and if you run this it will automatically limit the data but it is not necessary that we always need to view data in the console if you are writing files and you need only five records you need to put dot limit and in bracket five in order to do that now time for bonus tip we were discussing Consider a case where we need to add three columns at a time in a data frame. In order to achieve that, we need to write with column three times. But is there a better way? Yes. Consider you need to add three columns. Where the first column is a tax, where you need to calculate the 20% of the salary column. And the second column is a static value 1. We'll put lit of 1. And the third column is a static value of 2. We will put lit of 2. Now, we can create a dictionary like this, where we will add all the columns that we need to add. Now, since we have the employee data frame and we want to add these columns into the data frame, what we will do is, we will create EMP final data frame from EMP data frame, where we will add with columns. Now within this column, we can pass this dictionary of columns. Let's run this. Nothing happens since we are dealing with transformations now. In order to run this, let's call the show action. Awesome. We have all three columns added. We have the tax calculated from the EMP data frame. We have the static value as one. And we have the third column with a string value of 2. This was all for today. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.